welcome back guys um, last week I think it was I was watching Dee's workshop he was making um, a lathe uh, saddle stop for his lathe and it's the same kind of one that I made and it's got me thinking you know I've been winding up with trouble using that particular one so in this video I think you can see it I don't know I made this guy so you'll get to see some machining and um, yeah I didn't show anodizing really but I explained it again so if you want to know about anodizing go watch my video that I made a few weeks back so hope you enjoy see you next time okay so here's the problem I made uh, this saddle stop a long time ago I mean years ago same thing as D's just did and it goes in here and it clamps but the problem is I can't go farther back than that and you can see this is as close as I can get to the chuck sometimes I need to be way up there so I need to make something that clamps here that can slide all the way back so all right well that that's the idea of what I need to do I was gonna make it years ago but I know it's gonna be a lot of work so I'll uh, take you over to the bench and show you well wow camera's pretty close but see if I move it up a bit more I think about it this is not going to be easy so I kind of like this size I held this up against the uh, lathe and said yeah this this will work you know square so I didn't show face milling it but I had a piece of scrap that was so close it was ridiculous so um, made my little block that I'm going to use. Use the red die cam here. I was going to use that blue marker, but I said, eh. And the red die cam, for some reason, is really thick. Boy, it went on there heavy. I had to, like, blob it off. In any case, I kind of used my 45 here or whatever and kind of scratched out approximately what I want to do. But thinking about it, Okay, the lathe has this bump here that I gotta clear. All right, and using this guy, I could figure out what the height is of it. So this is, uh, the height here is basically 0.205. And by using my little um, optical comparator, I could figure out the exact width of this, which is 0.175. Now, what does this thing have to do? <laughs> that, I'm gonna draw it nice and crooked. All right, so there's gonna be a block that's gonna go on it. So now I know it's gonna be really hard. Oh, these faces too, I checked them out. They're, they are 45 degrees for sure. This guy, it's gonna be hard trying to mill out these faces. So I'm thinking if I'm lucky, I'll get the faces right with. If I'm not, they'll be too wide. So I want this part here to actually, if I'm too wide, I want that to clamp on the top. So using the caliper, I kind of gapped out 20 thou, and it looks like a pretty good safety gap. So I want to come in. I plan on cutting a groove first that's uh 20 thou under and since there's just five so i'm going to do 180 right 80 90 yeah so i'm going to cut the groove 0 0.180 deep that way if i blow the faces too wide it'll clamp on the top um with this other bottom piece here now how do i do the 245 faces it's going to have to be an end mill coming in like this so and then oh i didn't realize it i can't get that angle it's going to have to be like this to do that one and i probably will do it then like this on this one so if i accidentally notch in here slightly i don't care not going to see it this thing's going to go on the lathe and stay there permanently anyway so uh and i want to be a little bit skinnier with than this so I'll probably cut the groove um, what probably one six five wide 
uh, and I think I have a 1 8 end mill that I'm going to use. I, it did put the saddle stop in place, so if I have to take it out to do something, check it on the lathe, I can put it exactly back where it is. So, so far that's kind of the plans, and I have my little mark here. I don't know if you guys can see it, but I can kind of judge where center here is for the end mill and then go left and right to cut the groove out so hopefully i can get it right the question is i'll have to just visually look at the end mill and figure out when i'm about to hit this um yeah i may take this even skinnier than that maybe 160 175 it's only 10 thou huh? so I gotta still think about this number here because then I can visually see when I'm about to hit you know the the corner here of this thing with the end mill and I can afford like I said to go in deeper if I have to because it's all this whole thing here is just going to be visually and manually done so hopefully it comes out good and then I can find a piece for this bottom block and then I was going to make a knurled hand knob because I don't like tools hanging around to try to tighten this thing up. I want to be able to loosen it, move it to where I need to, clamp it down, done. And like I said, this is just going to stay on the lathe all the time. So, all right, well, let's see what happens. Okay, lighting probably isn't that great, but DRO is up and running, zeroed out. Let me hit zero again. Visually, move the x-axis till I look like I'm on center of what I want to do. And I can double check it here. Come, oh yeah, disgage, come down. Yeah, that's probably it. Zero it back out. I moved 8,000, big deal. So I'll come down until I hit the surface lock the axis then I have to go I'll go up because I know it's going to there and I can watch Z um, as I come down because I know just touching it I'm already down probably five thou or something so move it back I can turn it on and I'll come down slowly until I see it dusting that surface what am I at? Uh, Z, I guess zero everybody for the well. Alright, so I'm at zero for Z. Come down. Nothing yet, huh? Yeah, no. What am I down? See, eight thousandths. Oh, there it hits. That's probably a thou in, but okay, zero it. So now I can start doing my groove. Yeah, it's pretty good RPM. Go in five, five thou. Start cutting, huh? And I gotta go over to the print because I forgot how deep I'm supposed to go. I think it was 180. Five, go to 10. These are nice end mills. It is designed specifically for aluminum, but I'm sure there's better ones with a higher helix. 15 thou. And I can walk to the side here from time to time to give the chips clearance on the side. Uh, 20. And get the vacuum over here because I don't want chips all over the place. Alright, so I'll bring you back when I'm uh, actually done with this whole depth thing. Thought, what the heck, let me try to get the camera in where you can see what's going on. Uh, I had 45 go right that I made that cut right yeah go to 50 down 50 and then I'll take it to my left 5,000 to clean up that edge I want to go uh, put minus five yeah three four five that's the right no that's the wrong way I want to go the other way five Oh, went way too far. Seven, six, five, there. So, cleans that up a bit and go five down the other way. 
Yeah, all right. Oops, minus six, minus five, there. And then come back to zero, which is dead center. Keep going down. And you have to go down 180. All right, back to zero. Three, two, one, zero. 70 foul. Oop, 52. I was looking at the wrong numbers. Oh, that was probably good. That was probably 50. All right, so go to 55. 55. And then 60. Bring it vacuum over, clean it up so I can kind of see what I'm doing. And 60. So 58, 9, 60. So that's all there is to it. You guys get to see a bit of machining here. Pretty easy. I'm at 722 RPM. 65, 3, 4, 5. All right, well, bring you back then. <laughs> Pretty good. I'm down exactly 180 thou. And I'm 15 thou that way and 15 thou to the right. And when I had two thousandths more to go, since this is where it's good to have gauge pins, the gauge pin would not drop in there. I took the last two thousandth cut and the gauge pin just snugs in. So, uh, yeah, I'm at my target here for width. Looking at, I wonder if I should take it a little bit. I mean, that's pretty tight. Wow. Uh, yeah, me just kiss the surfaces of like a half a thou here. Um, but, yeah, it looks like magnifying glass. Looks like I'm on center to my scribe marks where I want to be. Double check it, yeah. Okay, so I didn't go all the way down. I'm not touching the line. So yeah, it looks like I have 20, 25 thou to go. So, okay, uh, I guess I'm gonna break it down and set it up for the um, angle cuts here, the 45s. All right, I should have shown this 45 block before I started this setup. It's basically, it's a, it's a 45, but it's got a shelf to it and I'm up against the vice top. So I could conceivably come exactly back to this position, tell the DRO this is an absolute position to remember it, and then I can come back and do, do the other face. But I'm thinking I need to bring the end mill right to this corner here and, and ignore my scribe line. So if I do, then the 45s will clamp onto the lathe so the whole thing is magnifying glass and just eyeballing it or going in four thousandths at a time i'm at 84 right now so unlock x-axis go in another four that would be 88 there's 88 and go it's very close and i'm eyeballing how far down the cs to go it is engaged for fine tuning, so I could come down one thou at a time if I want. Uh, it's still another four, yeah. So it's gonna be a while. Eight, okay, one, two, three, four. 92 thou. Yeah. Make sure that I do climb milling for the last pass, rather than conventional, so I get a nice finish on it. Very close, wow. Another four, huh? One, two, three, four, ninety-six thou. Get my magnifying glass out and just take a look at where everything is. Yeah. It's a nice end mill, I tell you, it's doing a great job. I gotta come down more. I'm seeing it, and it's still too high. Come down a bit more there. I don't know, I should have zeroed out the Z, but it didn't. Unlock it, and uh, 96. One, two, three, four. 100 thou in. And 100 how close is it now? Pretty darn close, probably around 20 thou more, and I'll be done. So, 
Oh, uh, time to vacuum up some of this stuff because I can't really see. <coughs> I would have a coughing attack. <coughs> Turn that light off. Uh, that one too is still pretty bad. How about that one? Yeah, not bad. I lucked out. I hit that corner right on the money. At least now I can kind of show you what this thing was. Uh, yeah, I haven't upset the DRO, so... So this is the, <laughs> it just sits in there. So now I'm going to put it in there this way and do the other side. And hopefully I can hit that just as good. I think so. But I was going four thou at the time, then down to two thou. Yeah, I guess I can just put it right there. Huh? Hold it square. Yeah, perfect. It'll clear the vise. It'll just clear. All right. So I'm just going to do this side, and then let's see how it fits. <laughs> wow, looks like I lucked out, blended it pretty good, like perfect. And yes, it fits perfectly. It's grabbing on the, um, the faces the way I want it. There's just a slight gap at the top of it. I'm not sure if you can really see it, but... So this is going to work really good. It just, it holds solid Oy, uh, as I drop it. All right, well, now clean it up and uh, make the bottom part. All right, I'm not sure if the camera can really see it very well, but I mean, that's it, all done up. <laughs> Sorry about this ugly spot on my hand. Toolbox lid came right down on me and boy, it hurt. Okay, I'm not going to show making the... Um, bottom half of this thing but I am drafting this up because I think it looks good and if anybody wants this is the hardest part here so to get that right so that's why I'm drafting it up and I'll have the bottom part there too and if I show making the bottom this is going to be a ridiculously long video four millimeter here hole for it to clear a 1032 um, thumb screw which I make I'll probably show making that maybe um, chamfered all the edges here uh, except for the bottom and just drag that on sandpaper this was all lapped with 600 grit WD-40 a lot of people ask why this because when the saddle comes up and hits chips will get in here and it'll gap you more so I've learned to put that there so the chips just fall underneath so and this is just centered here this is uh, centered to the bottom I've got all this on the print so I think it came out pretty good and I actually used um, angle block that's 10 degrees there it'll be on the print so and this guy's cool I mean you know when you really need something where it just sits in the vice at a 45 and you just clamp it down and it works otherwise you're trying to hold it and it's sliding all over the place very rarely do i use it but i have used it a few times that this is priceless for this project to figure out all these different depths and heights and so on and this guy i left this top part shiny it's got a few marks in it from the face mill but I want to see what it's going to look like because I'm thinking about anodizing this, the gold color or yellow, whatever. They, it's called yellow, but boy, it sure looks gold and it's nice. So I could either do it red, gold, or blue, whatever. And I think I'm just going to do gold. Kind of seems like it's still a little too tall, but I brought it down so that it's flush with the part of the saddle that this hits. It's a foot or whatever that pokes out. So, okay, uh, the mill's a complete mess. The floor chips are everywhere it's from the face mill, of course. Um, yeah, all right. So let me uh, make the bottom part and see what happens. Wow, there it is. I cannot believe how much work this thing is, and it's still not done. Two days, there it is. I can put it any place, lock it down and it does not move so it's rock solid so now i can put it down here and go deeper if i want um still have to chamfer all the edges to the bottom piece 
and again this thing is priceless for I measured everything and before anodizing it was all scratched up so I had relapped it and now this is like a test of the anodized because I don't see any scratches or marks in the bottom or any place this I had lapped but it got all scratched up on the top doing measuring and stuff like that so I am thrilled with this but boy what a lot of work the prints available for whoever wants it I'll have it remember no two lathes are exactly the same I've got a five thousandths gap in here and this thing can easily put me there it put me within a thou of everything that I wanted um, so yeah but the print will be a good starting point oh I didn't realize it I'm hitting the gear I got to take it back further well it's still more work this lip has to come back more to clear that wow okay well that's easy to do it just goes back in the mill like that and burp take it down that much see this is where it comes in handy I can do this hold it square there and just push it on there and then measure that and I've got my depth for it all right well I hope you enjoyed this video got to see some machining uh, yeah one small accident here I had all of these guys you know on the mill vice got too close to one of the <laughs> chamfer mills tore it to pieces so I gotta make another one of these now to replace that one fun fun all right well see you guys later anodizing is pretty easy step one 100% pure acetone from Home Depot two minutes to completely degrease the part next bath uh, <clears throat> well you just air dry it next bath is the sodium hydroxide 2% solution two minutes and if you see f heavy bubbles and foam all over the part the solution is still good next 100% pure distilled water I think it came from Vons it doesn't matter whose it is rinse it off thoroughly then um, pull it out next solution 20% sodium bisulfate one hour that's what you're looking at right now and the aluminum plate I always have to sand it and clean it down and you should see massive bubbles um, I if it's a large part you have to make a new 20% solution every time of sodium bisulfate uh, if it's a small part like this you can use it maybe twice this is the anodized bath creating the tubes next pull it out rinse it off again 100% distilled water then put it in your dye the yellow dye that I'm using which you can see in the background is four minutes because the solution is very clear it's not something that you can't see through if it were one that you could not see through it would be 60 seconds one minute so that's it for anodizing it's simple room all room temperature Thank you.